Okay, I think we're ready to go. Well, welcome, Elliot. It's a real pleasure to have you on here tonight. Excellent. So, how are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Nice to meet you. Uh, finally, look, having a chat instead of over Facebook. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. So, I've seen you around, and I've seen that you uh, you kind of uh, had a leave of absence from for Sabutia for quite a while, and then you came back. Uh, was it a year ago or a little bit longer than that? Uh, don't know if it was more i've technically played for 18 18 years now i'm 26 started when i was eight so yeah about 18 years now um, it might, might have been when i was playing football or new job sort of had a little tiny bit of a break but i haven't really stopped for the whole 18 years which is ridiculous Oh, okay. <laughs> All right then. So I've probably got my wires crossed there a little bit. So uh, just to begin with, because we're doing this series for basically a very wide demographics. Uh, okay. So, you know, some people uh, are like you, very experienced and have been in Sabutia for 18, 19, 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. But others are just coming into it, especially the ones here in Asia, because I'm based in Japan. And uh, so I thought I'd be interviewing people like yourself. I uh, already had very good interviews with uh, Brian Daly, um, mm -hmm. Vincent Copinole, and Daniel Sheen. Yep. And so just to begin with, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into Sabutio, a little bit about yourself, your background, and uh, what kept you going in Sabutio? Uh, well, like I said, I started 18 years ago when I was eight years old. Um, I think my first memory of it was one Christmas my dad got me a team uh, because he used to play back in the day, whenever mm. it was, whatever it was, um, whatever year it was. And I think he got back into it around 2004, maybe 2004-ish. And played in a tournament. I think he just wanted me to get involved with it because I was much about football. Um, and whereas a football sort of repli replica game, it was somebody thought I'd be interested in. And yeah, I started and it, it just kind of came natural. Uh, Ed, was it? Yeah, one of probably the heavy for that i think yeah it must have been heavyweights time for him like he collects all of celluloid figures and everything like that now but ah, right. he was uh he must have been heavyweights i think i don't know how old heavyweights would have been <laughs> my history on that uh, yeah case. i'm not sure but probably the 60s maybe or the yeah 70s. so he was yeah born 66. ah okay so, yeah, so something like that um and yeah, Excellent. then since then, playing had a table set up in the house nearly every every day after school, after football training, I'd come back and play. So you're yeah, you're like actually it. you're actually a, a football player, right? Yeah. So up until seventeen or eighteen, I was playing like professional um, until oh, I got wow. injured. Ah. And, uh, yeah, once the injury happened, I was kind of just focused more on this than uh, anything else. It was so many injuries coming from football eventually that I've kind of given up and not playing. But, um, yeah, 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 that happens. I, yeah. I, I miss it a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you're still young, aren't you? If you don't mind, how old, 20, how old are you? I'm 26 now, just turned 26 the other day. Wow, um, yeah, you're so, so I can feel still. it's hitting me. <laughs> really? I don't, I don't feel like I am. Yeah, I feel 26? Wow, I'm double your age. So, I... <laughs> yeah, I'll be 54 in March. So, when you say 26 and you're feeling, oh, well, for a pro player, yeah, I know. I know because yeah. the intensity, you burn your joints out real quick mm -hmm. and the injuries do pile on. So, uh, no, I understand that. Excellent, excellent. So, do you actually, um, getting back to the Sabutia, of course, now, the modern game can we actually call it sabutio it's kind of a little bit different with the bases but you know the background yeah, with new footy whatever uh do you have a favorite player in this modern uh table football 
uh, a world or um, is, was there a, a role model for you or? Uh, if I'm looking English players from growing up, yeah, you always had Chris Thomas, Casper Bennett, uh, Darren Clark, all of these players who luckily I shared the stage and the last World Cup in their team. Um, like watching them players play, and <laughs> like when when you're a kid getting beaten 10, 10 plus nil, you're you're mm. not really thinking, oh wow, I'm going to get to this sort of level. Um, but yeah, just watching them play, and then obviously on the newer days, you got Flores, uh, uh -huh. a lot of the Italians as well. It's just yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a good sort of style to see nowadays. It's more attacking than a lot of like the veteran players will play quite defensive. And mm. some some open players will as well, but um, more of a fast flowing attacking game because it's more exciting. It's it's, it's yeah uh, more fun to watch when it's a, yeah. a bit of attacking. Yeah, yeah, and then you get uh, that satisfaction of scoring, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent, excellent. And uh, tell us a little bit uh, then about your own playing style, because you just mentioned you're more of a, into attacking. So how would you describe your play style? Uh, I'd say very fast, as a lot of people tell me. Um, try, they try to tell me to slow down in the game, and it's not my sort of style. Um, I, I, don't, I don't mind defending. My goalkeeping is pretty good, so if I miss a block, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that I'll be able to save with my keeper uh but yeah just very attacking a lot of shots on the move just bring a bit of flair into the game i think it's, it's what it needs excellent that's pretty good and uh what has your experience been with various bases of course uh some people you know have a particular base that they they stick with others like mm -hmm. move on they try various uh what was your your route to choosing the the current bases you use and tell us a little bit about that okay so i think i started off with short shots like a lot of people did as one of the bases that came in for starters uh then went on to a astro base c i think the c5 tri base when i was a bit younger um something that had a bit more heavier touch to it uh then moved on to a profi base c3 mm. which i loved but i could never get an exact copy of the base that i had so it wasn't worth it when someone else was playing blue like i used to uh and then when extreme works came out everyone was talking about it so i jumped straight onto that uh and i've stuck with extreme works probably for 15 years or whatever it is now it's so wow. um, i did have uh universals which was i think that's kind of a newer one but now i've reverted back to his original base that he brought out which everyone doesn't really know the name of it but i've got three teams exactly the same and all set oh, up perfectly excellent and what 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 are they <laughs> if you don't mind me so <laughs> extreme works i call them original because it's the first ones that claudio degali brought out um some call them best touch it's, there's loads of different names for it but they're quite rare to get hold of now um uh, because how old they are uh so yeah i've got three sets set up two pink sets and one ice white uh, all with chelsea teams because uh, chelsea is my love okay <laughs> and uh yeah so i've got 0.4 weight yeah 0.4 gram weights in them uh file down discs to kind of get the player to sit lower in the base so you've um them a little bit yourself yeah um just i think that's personal preference because i like i don't know why but when they're sitting a bit lower profile mm. i like the look of them they mm. might actually have a center a lower center of gravity as well so the sliding mm. could help um, but it's minimal margin so got to try and get as much as you can out of a base and uh, out of your team yeah no that's fair enough yeah that's uh i think a lot of pros do that they tinker around a little bit just to get something that 
suits their even their their arm weight their finger weight uh, a few mm -hmm. players to tell me you know choosing a base is really depends on your body style the finesse of touch that you have with your fingers yeah so there was uh one guy that was telling me he's uh, he's a musician so he has a very fine touch with his his fingers but he says if you're playing someone with very swarthy hands um they may be better suited to a you know a, a base where they can manipulate you know because of their hand weight so all that has yeah to exactly i think that's what a lot of people don't understand when you're picking a base it's very much how you feel with it not what everyone else goes with um which is why you get players changing around all the time with their base going well this still isn't right and changing like little things like filing down a disc slightly and yeah i think it is a lot of hard work to actually put into picking something as easy as what you could be flicking around on a table yeah exactly exactly so you've played in a lot of tournaments um mm -hmm. this is probably a hard question because i asked uh, uh, a few people the same and and they had a bit of a hard time thinking of it um but what has been one of your best memories in the tournaments? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Maybe one of your favorite mm. tournaments for some particular reason? See, normally for me, it's the social side of the events. Um, like you have a tournament up in Glasgow where after the Sabuto, you've got a massive party going on inside the hotel, which all of us sneak into and <laughs> right. get, get very drunk and things like that. Um, but then I think any sort of team event is what I enjoy. It's the pressure, but you're all gathered together trying to get the same goal out of a, a result. Um, mm, mm. It's that sort of cheering each other on during the events. It's, it's like at the last World Cup. Mm. On the Saturday in the individual, I got to the last 16, which was mm. the best in England. Great. But all I cared about was, oh, how are we going to do tomorrow in a team event? Because um, I think I kind of throw myself away when it comes to individual wins because I, I don't really care. I'm, I'm there to try and enjoy it when it's individual. But if it's for a team, I want to win for the team. Right, um, right. So, yeah, when we got into the, we got out of the groups and then had to play Italy and we gave them a really good good game, like we could run them close. Um, for a team that's favorite to win the event i think we've done pretty well and it was just pushing each other to a certain level to get there wow this was the past uh world cup when was that was it december or earlier yeah, than that? September, was september september this year yeah excellent oh, no, Ex last year. yeah uh, that's right yeah well, we, we just got we're in the new year yeah now. Yeah, no, we just switched. We just switched. It's, it's natural. Yeah. I forget. Well, yeah, it doesn't feel like a new year, really, does it? Um, yeah. So, so you mentioned you gave them a, a, a close run. Well, tell us a little bit about y your players and who they played against. If you remember, what uh, were the scores? So, I played against Claudio Latour, who uh, young player. I think he's a couple of years younger than me, um, but one of these people you could see will be top top uh level um which i went one nil up and i don't think any of us were expecting it i went one nil up pretty quickly wow uh which i think gave a bit of a boost to everyone <laughs> in the confidence because if, if you go one nil up against italy it's something mm. that you're like wow this is brilliant um so i played him in the end i did lose two one or three one i think oh, that's um, close but yeah as soon as i got my one goal i was I'm having to play an unnatural game and try and hold the ball and mm -hmm. not not attack as much as possible because um, I know how good he is as a player. Um, mm. Then we had Darren Clark versus Matteo uh, Ciccarelli. I think he's, I can't pronounce his surname, right. but I played. Yeah. He's another one around my age. Um, he got into the final of the individuals the day before. Oh, wow. Um, can't actually remember the result of Darren. I think it was another one where it was close. Uh, well, I think all of our games were close actually, but I think that might have only been a one nil or it could even have been a draw. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, That's really good. Hmm. 
Then on the other pitch, we had Casper Bennett versus, I think it was Bari. Mm. So they're in Bari. And then they brought on Kalanjo the second half because they were uh, drawing. Or, mm. And I think that game ended 2 2 because Casper played really well, um, especially against the world champion to get a draw. It's, hey. it's something. Uh, wow. And then Chris Thomas played uh, Batelli. And I think that might have even been a draw. So I think we only lost 2 0 or 1 0 overall. Wow. Um, wow. That's but yeah, really very good. close. And, it's good, uh, good step towards twenty twenty four when the uh, World Cup's going to be in England. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I saw that you'll have uh, call it the home advantage, so to speak. Home advantage, the uh, time being uh, in our hand instead of us being an hour ahead. Yeah. yeah. So that's right, good. So. And what what pitches will you guys use in England? Uh, I haven't been told yet, but I believe it's going to be an extreme works pitch. Because um, I know in Italy we played on the Astro base pitches, but the ones we're playing on didn't really suit a lot of our styles because we're used to faster pitches. Obviously, the humidity is less over here. Um, so it's a lot quicker games when we play on uh, Extreme Works. Um, mm, mm. So I think it will be Extreme Works. If I get okay. my way and uh, speak to them, it'll be Extreme Works. Right, right. But I, I, I guess over there they're used to all the pitches. <laughs> That's yeah. the problem because they make them exactly. all over there. Yeah, so. ex exactly. They've got everything. So yeah. like on my table, I've got four or five different pitches to lay on my pitch, depending on what tournament I'm going to and what I need to train on. So, yeah, best I can do to try and get you uh, ready for a tournament. Excellent, excellent. And uh, so what, what would you consider to be the more important factors in preparing for these high-level tournaments? Of course, over here, you know, in, in Japan, we don't have, uh, no offence to any Japanese players, but we don't have the calibre or quality uh, mm -hmm. that you would face. And, like, it, it's just the world of difference, right? I'll just give you an example. I've only been playing a year and a half, and without boasting, I bet the Japan number one after not playing for a whole year. Uh, yep. Now, I wouldn't be able to do that with any European. I just wouldn't be able to. And then that's not an insult to any Japanese. It's just because in Japan, there are only about 40 players in a nation of yep. 120 million. In Europe, you've got a vast history of going from the old game to the new one you've got various nations and just the level from the amateur casual players to the semi-pros to the real serious professors it's just so many of them that uh the game in europe is just light years ahead right yeah so uh we are interested in what well, what do you guys consider to be very important like foundations to become uh good in tournaments and tournament re ready so to speak well, I think for England, there's been a big push within the last few years, uh, thanks to Alan Lee coming in and um, kind of getting everyone playing again, because as soon as you're getting people playing together, you're pushing each other's level up. Mm. And that's where the top players then have to step up again to try and stay at that top level, because otherwise you get people breaking into it and it's going to cause uh, everyone basically playing against each other to get this like world cup spots or to win mm. and that's that's good competition it's good healthy competition um in terms of getting to like the level to be ready for the world cup there's a lot of like self practice needed um which like before the world cup i was practicing at least to make one two hours every day um just to get ready for the world cup Wow. Even like mentally, you need to be prepared. So, uh, Darren Clark like sent me um, an audio book to listen to about on uh, previous Olympic champions and stuff like that. Um, make sure you're in your right space to mm. actually play the game going into it. So, like Darren before would go lay down, put his headphones in do a bit of a, what's it called? 
it's, it's gone out of my head. Just like kind of, relaxation therapy. Yeah, kind like of that. like uh, maybe focused meditation or something, or yeah, just rehearsal like of that. something. Yeah, 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 love. yeah, where you're just thinking about what's going to happen and how you're going to do it in the game. Um, and yeah, he seems to do that without fail before games, just so he's cleared cleared his own head, knows what he's going to do. Um, but I, I'd say to get to that first step, it's just playing and practicing. A lot of uh, stepping up is playing better players to then get your level up. But if you don't have that around, it's just self-practice and doing things that are going to be repetitive just so it gets like stuck in your head on what you're going to do. Um, it doesn't have to be the hardest training, but as long as you're doing it correctly and you've got a goal that you're aiming towards, then uh, I think that'll step your level up. Excellent, excellent. Very good, very good. Now you've uh, you've eighteen years is a long time for this kind of game. So, uh, you 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 must have uh, come across some changes to the rules, or maybe in your own mind you thought, well, that rule it could be improved or whatever. So my next quickly is, uh, what are the rules you like in the modern game of table football, and what are some of the rules that you kind of really kind of uh you don't like so much <laughs> yeah. um i think with the new smashing rule that came in a few years ago i'm actually a bit of a fan of it because you could well from previous when certain players are playing you have a defensive line and within two seconds you haven't got anyone there and they could just come straight through score a goal pretty easily especially at this level um but then there is part of the smashing rule where you can tell that someone hasn't meant mean to move to two players and it's like in this like they're playing away from your goal and they'll smash still and it'll be a free kick and you're just like well that was not necessary like yeah there's a certain way to look at it and i don't know if they've done it 100 percent correctly but it is what it is um no flicks. I do like the no flicks rule. Uh, I think I think in the no flicks rule you should have to pick the player closest to the ball to use and then say no flicks, not pick someone who's the other side of the pitch, pick up and then say no flicks because that wouldn't be realistic in actual football. Um, could bring it into corners, but then not many times you'll get someone having a corner with no like no defenders in the box. So I think that can stay out. Uh, I don't really know any other rule changes that happen. Like, whenever you play, it seems like when I'm playing in Europe, it seems like you go to a tournament and learn a new rule, even though it's probably been in the rule book for God knows how long, but the interpretation is different. And yeah. um, that causes a lot of issues. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. Also was uh, translated, but yeah, yeah, originally French, yeah. So, but it was written in English. There can be some it was, yeah. it will change. interpretation differences, and what does that mean exactly? Because in French, it's clear, and in English, it's a bit unclear. Yeah, you, it's like we'll go to Italy and it'll be a rule that comes up and you're like, is that an actual rule or is it just a rule <laughs> you guys face it? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it is a lot of uh, controversy on that because you're never going to have exactly written out perfectly unless it gets like a complete overhaul. And even that, you can't just press Google Translate, translate it that way and hope that it does the best. Yeah, yeah. One thing I'd like to see, I don't know how it is in Europe, is to have... Um, maybe um kind of a training system for refereeing yeah so some people love it some people hate it it's it is what it is um i'm one of these people but it depends on what game i'm reffing if i love it or hate it if it's someone mm. that is boring me and i might fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i'm not that interested yeah. but right. uh, if it's like a massive game like big game i, I like reffing um but you're never going to get anything from it 
unless referees got paid a certain fee or got something from it because mm, mm. no no one's gonna be that bothered unless you're getting something from it and you're getting a bit like scrutinized if you do something wrong and it's so mm. quick to the game it, you're gonna make mistakes it's not like we've got var and things like that in, in the well, game yeah. where, where you can go actually hold on gonna put <laughs> yeah, um, that Mm. Yeah, if, if they wanted to do that, like, you're gonna have to have loads of cameras around a pitch, and it would be, yeah, it'd be ridiculous. I think. I yeah, that in play. yeah, it would be something of that that small size. Yeah, would be a little bit. Tell us a little bit, um, Elliot. Tell us a little bit about your current club and ha uh, how that that is like. Maybe a little bit of uh, the background of that club as well. Uh, what do you mean by club? <laughs> are, are, are you, so, so are you, you're a member of a club, right? That you mainly so playing. I played. I've signed for a new team this season. Uh, ah, Villette okay. Alliance, uh, Villette Alliance. So they're a Maltese club. Um, but we worked out the best terms of what club to go to for myself next season. Well, for this season, and um, they offered the best terms that I can have. Um, Last year, I was with Glide Slide Chip Dip, which was an English club who we didn't have like team meetings, like club meetings, but we'd go round each other's house for a few drinks and a few games here and there. Right. Um, More social, yeah. Yeah, which was kind of the English is England's best players sort of played for them. Um, uh -huh. We wanted an English club where we all play for the same club. It took me a while to come around to the idea of it because I was one of these people who thought we should share out the elite players between clubs in England. So it gives everyone a bit of a fair chance of winning and stuff like that. But then when we go abroad, it would never work because we've only got so-called one top player and you're mm. in a tournament with just one player. Mm. Um, so yeah, last season we had pretty good success. Um, and yeah, I, I don't really play at any club meetings anymore in England. Normally, I hold it either at my house and just get one person to come around at a time and play four or five games at a time. Um, just so I'm getting good practice and so is the other person. We're just getting like top sort of level. So like tomorrow, I've got someone coming around around lunchtime for four or five games. And then in the evening, someone's coming here as well. Cool. Four or five games, so at least I'll get ten games in. Uh, yeah, and I, I think that's the best way to do it when uh, there's not really a club too local to here. Ah, uh, um, okay. Bob Barney runs a like a casual club that's run inside of a pub. Um, whereas when we're doing that, it's kind of just a bit of a laugh, a gathering. We'll do winner stays on one goal sort of training which is good for like sudden death training for me but mm. a lot of people there don't really want to play seriously they just want to have a bit of a laugh and a joke which is great because any sort of playing is good yeah yeah well especially if you're drinking i think the desire to keep yeah, beat I, I think that's better, better part. <laughs> yeah that's fair enough excellent that's pretty good. So now I'm going to ask you something that I, I don't know if you're interested in or not, but I'd just like to hear your viewpoint there, Elliot. How do you see the future of modern table football? And, uh, you know, because in this digital age, everybody's going into more, you know, the digital handheld consoles, et cetera. Yeah. And um, what do you think would be some good ideas to help uh newbies get into it you know younger people or even retired people so to speak uh, see i'm one of these people that is being a bit realistic with it and i don't think it's going to last uh, too long um obviously if i if i have kids my kids will be introduced to it they won't be forced to play but Mm. Maybe maybe they'll be forced a bit, but <laughs> um, in the beginning, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of it is if you can get round football clubs mm. with kids who play football, get something like going on like a Friday night or something, so it's not school time. Um, so they've got the day off on Saturday, so they can stay out a bit later on Friday. So you've got a club running. Um, 
it's it's hard to get interest to it now i would say because i think a lot of people that are coming into it are the people who used to play and remember it for what it used to be and mm. i think uh it is a hard transition to get them to start playing a game where it's a lot flatter bases your players mm. not falling over every two seconds uh mm. when you're flicking um and it's a lot quicker but I, I think that sort of social side should be the main appeal of look have a cup come over have a flick about have a beer sit down have a bit of a chat i think that's the best outlook for the people who used to play or getting into it but are a bit older because um, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people want they, they just want to have like a group to chat to um meet meet people like new people like for me a lot of it was i get travel like around europe playing this silly game i could go travel anyway but it gives me a reason to go away and uh go visit new places um i think sort of my age group around the 20s you're going to get it if the dads used to play or uh, if they come across it from, like in a loft or something like that mm, um, mm. and yeah for the younger kids i just think it's aimed for football football clubs even schools um because i know there's like a club near my uh house which is oh okay they do like school time at like lunchtime at school they have like a little league and ah. get the kids involved at school which is very good if you've got links into schools um, well, yeah that's pretty good yeah so i think it's just getting people involved I, i'd say minimal as possible to start off with because you don't want to scare people off but mm, mm. Me, me and my dad have done like school fates and things where we brought like a shootout competition or something like that um and everyone goes oh yeah this is brilliant we'll show up we'd love mm. to go further and then when you have like mm. a club night you you don't get anyone showing up so mm. it's just something yeah. of that persistence and you sometimes people don't well can't continue to uh push to get people to come and uh, join it but yeah I, I, I think i think it will the numbers will keep decreasing um unless it gets a bit more advertisement and Sabutio slash I think Hasbro still own it at the moment get involved and want to push it a bit more again mm, mm. Yeah, so you need some serious <laughs> promotions there. So you you see it uh, As kind of like Eventually disappearing in the UK. Is that what you're trying to say? Or? Yeah, I, I think so just because the way that gaming is now um, It's getting more advanced um, Again things like playing fifa all the time or playing on playstation xbox or even mm. the, like with vr now it's getting so realistic that people mm. are going on mm. that and you won't have to flick a bit of plastic around the table you can you know, play football with putting a headset on and <laughs> it's just right. different, different stuff like that technology i think with like everything just replaces um as we've mm. seen Mm. But wouldn't you think that people uh, will miss that tactile kind of like uh, experience that you get from uh, actually handling figures and you know, the I sounds and I, playing face to face? I with hope someone. so. Yeah. But because how new generations are being brought up, like even nowadays, you'll see like a baby being able to use an iPad by <laughs> before <laughs> before it can even go toilet. Like yeah, I think one, you. No, you're right. I think become more like cyborgs than <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're exactly. Like you just hand over, mm. yeah, because you see it like when I was brought up, iPads didn't exist. Um, it, I was told to go outside and play, and nowadays you get people going, "No, you shouldn't go outside. You <laughs> go go play upstairs on on your PlayStation, talk to your friends that way." Like it's, it's just different sort of lifestyle. Mm. This is a little bit of 
socialize you have more of that tactile experience it's something a con yeah skill it's maybe because promoted you know you got mm -hmm. uh leave france and but more yep get in with yeah. a do it in a way have a uh continue me ever I think it's kind of maybe culturally yeah. a little bit different. I think that's what it is as well, as well with certain parents probably. I don't know. I think in the UK, yeah, it's a bit more stand standoffish and like don't talk to strangers, <laughs> things like Because if you yeah. don't have the right person promoting the mm. game, mm. like if you're going with promoting it and you've got someone who's not really like tech savvy or anything like that trying to promote it and they're like well i don't uh relate to you in any sort of way they're not going to want to get involved but if you've got someone who they can relate to then you might get a bit more people involved and get a group together that way yeah no good point good point so let's move on from that then Elliot. are you uh tell us about your your current plans what are you uh what are you prepping up for what do you got? In the, what do you got in the works, or, or, or are we probing into Not, your secrets now? It's a secret now. Uh, at the moment, I've I've got into a new job and got a dog now, so ah, I'm actually looking nice. to calm down a bit more with my playing. Um, okay. At the moment, what have I plan to do? Uh, Vienna, um, Messina, and Derry. Uh, my free tournaments abroad that I'm looking at at the moment. I know Derry's not really abroad for us, but yeah, maybe a, D depends what part of the UK. What, what part of the UK are you in? I'm uh, England, London. Well, oh, England, oh okay, London. okay, okay. But, uh, yeah, so Derry's Northern Ireland, but yeah, I've, I think they're my free that I'm looking at at the moment. There's like tournaments like Mons, which. I love going to, but this mm. year is not possible because I can't get time off work with me changing uh, uh, to a new job. Um, yeah, it's a lot more. I've got to plan it out now uh, instead of just go, <laughs> go, go every tournament. Right. Um, but yeah, I'll be practicing continuously. There's a tournament in England coming up next month, which I'll play in, and I'm sure I'll get enough practice in by then and be ready. Ah, uh, and unless you get too involved with your dog, which you know, yeah, dog's no. like a f family member, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's taken over my life yeah. since we got him. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's it's lucky because me and my partner we work different shifts. So, mm. um, if I'm working, then she'll actually have him, or the other way around. So if I can go away, then perfect. Excellent, excellent. Okay, excellent. Well, do you have anything else you'd like to add that I haven't really asked or covered? Or No, mate. I think uh, all good. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's been a real pleasure speaking to you, Elliot. Yeah, you uh, too, yeah. yeah. No, I saw you around for quite a while. I wanted to get in touch with you, and then I, I realized, wait a minute, we're not even friends on Facebook, so <laughs> that's, that, that's step <laughs> yeah, one. We've had so many thing. conversations over Facebook, yeah. but I yeah. just yeah. realized uh, when you sent me the invite, yeah excellent excellent well thanks for that that was a really good interview very nice to uh hit, have heard of your uh very practical and very sincere kind of like opinions even about the uh the future of sabudi i know i think you're right but maybe that will actually wake people up to um well let's not say hit the panic button but come out with a bit we'll of start. more strategy yeah. here because if they really have a passion to keep it going because it is a it's a good way to to socialize as well so yeah know, that's the way i look at it anyway yeah, so, mm. yeah i think yeah. uh it'll, it'll cut in, in a few years people will realize and that's when people will start 
be like, oh no, we need to, need to start pushing a bit more. But yeah, be, we'll work out. Before we all get implanted with these AI chips in the brain yeah, and uh, become exactly. real life uh, Terminators or cyborgs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks once again, Elliot. I hope yeah. to talk to you again soon. So have a good one. Uh, Cheers, what time is it there? What time is it there? At uh, the Four forty. Just now. 4 40 p.m we're heading towards 2 a.m here so it's a good time to Brilliant. sign off <laughs> get, get yeah. to sleep mate get to sleep excellent Brilliant. excellent Cheers, okay mate. so have a good one it's been a real pleasure good talk to you. to you again soon elliot thank you cheers cheers mate. bye